Hello there music friends, Marcel Huster here, enjoying the beautiful sunny weather outside. Well, I'm not outside, I'm inside of course, but I'm still enjoying the weather. Uh, so, how's your day? How are you doing? Hope the weather's good at your side as well. Sorry, I just wanted to make a bit of small talk, you know. I wanted to show some interest in you guys. I mean, you know, show that I care about you as well, but I already hear it. Okay, okay. I'll get down to business, I'll go straight into the review. I mean, you're here for the music, I understand. Well, no worries then, because I'm here for the music as well, so that makes two of us. And I have another fantastic album. Don't I ever? I always have fantastic albums. I always I only review fantastic albums, that's my secret. Here we have it, the second album by the German band Flaming Row. I hope I can call them a band. And it has a long title. Mirage, a portrayal of figures. I'm Ray Hove, I'm Diego Tejeda, I'm Richard Henshaw, and we're Hayden. And you're watching Live Frog. I was put on the trail of Flaming Row late 2011 when someone sent me a Facebook message, you know, you should check this band out. I did, I listened to the album, long story short, I reviewed it, I loved it. And in my review I said, you know, I dare call this a masterpiece. Now, when I got this album, uh, well, when I heard that they were wor working on a second album, I got, of course, all these questions in my head. I mean, oh man, I thought that was a masterpiece. Um, what am I going to think of this one? Will it be up to standards? Will they keep the same ideas? Well, all these questions uh, were in my head. And of course, I went back to Eleanor to listen to it because, well, the, the downside of having a, a huge pile of CDs still waiting to be reviewed is that I don't get a chance to listen to any of the other albums I still have in here, which is a bit of a shame. But in preparation of this review, I had a good opportunity to, you know, pick up my copy of Eleanor and play it again and I listened to it and again I thought wow it's really fantastic it was not definitely a very immense uh, and very epic album um, so I thought you know after two years I still love that album very much so well here we have the second one now fortunately very happy about that here we have the team, the core of Flaming Row, and I think I can call them a band, although it is well, very much a project-like approach, uh, similar to what, for example, Arjen Lukasen or uh, Tobias Summer do with, um, well, the latter one with Avantasia. Um, but as I said, here we have the core. Uh, Martin Schnella, Mark Arnold, Nicholas Kahl and Kiri Geile. Kiri Geile wrote the story of Illinois and she also wrote the story that f forms the basis for this album. Um, and did I mention that? This album is going to be a trilogy. This is the first part of it. Um, and well, they're very ambitious, they're very bold. Uh, and they decided, you know, to work on a, a really massive undertaking, a trilogy, uh, most likely following the path of Peter Jackson. You know, every year they release a new episode of it uh, until in three years we have the full album. That's my estimate, but well, we'll see how it goes. Um, one thing I find a little bit funny is this is the original picture from the Eleanor booklet and this is from the new one. There's a couple of years in between, but as you can see, the guys and girl haven't changed that much. The only difference I can see is that Martin Schneller has a little bit more hair. So we have once again uh, an album with a, a, well, a massive approach, a epic, uh, it, it's an album of epic proportions in every way. There are three tracks that clock well over 10 minutes. Uh, we have the Journey to the Afterlife track 4 which clocks around well, 12 minutes. The opening track Mirage a Portrayal of Figures part 1 clocks over 16 minutes and the final track uh, in appearance, a portrayal of figures part 2 clocks almost 19 minutes. So, again, epic tracks. There are a couple of shorter tracks in between, but ranging between 4 and 9 minutes. Similar to what they did on Eleanor, they have uh, a cast of uh, singers that portray not just persons, but also all kinds of other 
elements, things and whatnot. So you have to really check out the booklet. Uh, there they have all the lyrics in it. Another similarity, uh, and again, that's a bit of a bummer, but once again, they did not include the story in the booklet. So you have the lyrics, but you don't have the story. And that is a bit of a shame because especially with an album like this, I mean, also the artwork, you know, it all gives you the idea of, you know, this, they're trying to say something with it. And, um, well, I don't know. Well, I know, of course I know. I mean, I have this, you know, these things you often get. And here they give the story away. Now, I'm not gonna tell you the story because that will take up too much time for this review, which will be long, longer than I planned anyway. Um, but it, it deals about kind of the Third World War. It, it's very set in the future and, uh, well, they, they create a really interesting story where they have multiple personalities in it so they can use multiple singers and that creates amazing vocal effects. Now, I didn't like every singer on the album, but in general, uh, I am really blown away by this album. And well, the fact that I didn't like every singer is more a personal uh, thing than, than that it's uh, about the quality. Noticed is this. That is something I think we will see. Well, only growing, you know. The people who pre ordered the album, uh, more and more uh, musicians will go for crowdfunding to well, make sure they can afford to make an album and fund it. So, uh, and well, one of the things is a thank you in the in the book. Uh, all right, let's take out the booklet. I mean. This is to give you an impression of how awesome and how epic this album is. This is the list of people who are working on it. All kinds of musicians, singers, uh, known and well, uh, lesser known people. Um, I'm not going to mention them, all of them, because, well, again, that would take up a lot of time. But uh, there are a couple of people that also were part of Eleanor that are back now. For example, uh, Jimmy Keegan, uh, Gary Werkamp, uh, Brent Allman. Um, there was one more, uh, Toby Rice I believe also, and Anna Trautmann. Uh, so there, there are a couple of people that uh, rejoined for this one and there are a lot of different people. Uh, a few of the familiar names, uh, Christopher Gildenlow plays uh, bass parts on the album. Uh, we have Diego Tejeda from Haken doing a synth solo on the album. Uh, Dave Miros from Spock's Beard doing bass, Ted Leonard from Spock's Beard doing vocals. We have Leo Margaret uh, from Pain of Salvation, but also recently from Episode, who's doing drums on the album. And we have uh, oh yeah, Maggie Luyten, uh, another Dutch singer who also recently uh, performed with Beyond the Bridge. Uh, she also does vocals on the album. And we have none other than Mr. Arjen Anthony Lucassen doing a really amazing guitar solo. Uh, but I gotta be honest, uh, if I listen to the album and I look at the guitar solos that Martin Schneller does, these are pretty impressive as well. Um, Martin Schneller is a real uh, multi-instrumentalist. When you see what he plays on the album and how he does that, I, I'd say that's really impressive. But also, uh, writing these epic tracks and, and all these... Uh, there's so much going on in it. I mean, I, I was working on a, a, a small list, you know, to tell you something about the music but I, I came to track number four and I thought forget it there's so much going on in there and, and it's such a variety of styles and influences and instruments and anything that he uses in there uh, that make it a really epic album and that is what I absolutely admire about well the people behind Flaming Row and especially Martin Schneller but all of them uh, they, they do such a fantastic job also in the, the lyrics in the songwriting, uh, in the, the story behind it, you know, it's, it's really very impressive what they did. A few things that I picked up that I really wanted to mention is something in the first track, I mean, you have 16 minutes and I wanted to pick one element that really stood out for me and that was this really amazing well, sort of piano solo. Uh, it is listed as Ragtime Piano by Tobias Reis, uh, but I, I thought that this is the piano that you hear in an old western saloon. You know? And that goes into the whole idea of, because 
musically, it is a really amazing blend between progressive rock and progressive metal. Uh, it is less on the metal side than Eleanor. Eleanor had a little bit heavier, crunchier sound in it. This is a little bit more melodic. There are still some really nice heavy parts in it, but generally uh, it is a little bit more melodic. There are some quieter songs in it, for example, um, in track number 7, uh, Pictures. That is really a, a, a softer song, uh, more acoustic. We have a really beautiful uh, saxophone part by Mark Arnold in there. That is, the, that is the stuff I love this guy for. I mean, he's an amazing saxophone player. Uh, he also plays clarinet on one track, which is also really beautiful. And it just adds this little nice mood towards the music. Um, the guitar solos I love very much, but also the second track, Aim L45 is also something that stands out because that has a more of a medieval sound not as much as uh, heavy but but really that idea that you are uh, at a court of a king uh, so again given the fact that i believe this story is set in the future and you go back to these old sounds that that creates a really interesting uh, album to listen to for, for for as a listener this is a fantastic album to listen to because there's so much going on they mix so many different styles and kinds of music uh, and still make it a really fantastic album. Uh, so that's definitely what I like. Um, track number five, uh, Alcatraz, that, that starts out with these harmony vocals that you hear in these 80s hard rock bands, uh, which is really cool. Um, no, I said it wrong, that's number, that's track number three, Burning Sky. I can't read my own handwriting here. Um, well, as I said, track number four, a Journey to the Afterlife, 12 and minutes and something, you gotta listen to it for yourself, and, and wow, so much going on there, really epic. The same goes for the last track of the album, track number eight, um, in appearance of Portrayal of Figures Part 2, again, that is such an amazing song, such an epic song, uh, you know, and that's how they end the album with, and I think that's really fantastic, uh, really opens up to a new beautiful piano played by Mark Arnold and again, those are the things I really love and I really enjoy listening to it. This is one of those albums uh, that I can really just lie down, close my eyes and listen to it and just close off the rest of the world and really enjoy the music. As I said, there's really too much going on. I, I'm really impressed that they uh, managed to come up with such an amazing album once again and once again I would almost say this is a masterpiece because again uh, this is so amazing how they did it. Uh, these guys are so talented. Um, I can only have the highest of praise for them as you can see and um, yeah wow. <laughs> That's it. Um, I'm, I can keep on going saying how great they are, but that's getting a little bit boring. So uh, I, I better end it. Um, I, I guess you know. You know, I'm enthusiastic about this album. I think it is. I think it is a masterpiece. I think it's a really fantastic album. I think these young musicians can really uh, well measure up themselves or, or look. You know, people like Arjen Lucas or Tobias Summit uh, straight in the eyes because they are just as talented and make this incredible music. Uh, so I say, you know, if you are not familiar with Eleanor, ah, you have two albums you need because you also need to have a copy of Eleanor uh, because that also is a fantastic album. Yeah, you thought I was going to say something different, but I didn't. I was, but I decided not to. Uh, and. This one, uh, Mirage, a portrait of figures, you really need to have it because it is simply a stunning album. Um, that's it. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop talking here. Um, but I'm curious how you think of this album. I mean, is my praise justified, or do you have a different opinion? Let me know as I comment on my YouTube channel. And of course, I hope you will see me at a new review.